It seems foldables are gonna be the thing in 2023, at least judging by the current launches. As yes, Oppo just launched the Find N2 and the Find N2 Flip, so get ready because design ideas are getting challenged. We have new rumors that point at Cupertino working on a new and bigger MacBook Air, and yeah, I mean newer than before. And Carl Pei might be preparing a surprise for nothing fans of the United States. I'm Jaime Rivera, and if you missed our first look at the Honor Magic VS, make sure you catch up to know where I'm going today. This is Pocket Now Daily. The hot official news today are coming later on in the video, but let's start with Apple and some of the latest features that were added with iOS 16.2 after more than a month of testing. The Freeform application is finally available and lets uh, multiple users work on the same document with updates synced for all participants in real time. It works as a creative space that can be used for sketching, designing mood boards, and brainstorming ideas. Apple Music Sing is also part of the new iOS version that, well, basically works as a karaoke feature for Apple Music subscribers. It provides real-time lyrics that uh, users can sing along with and also includes adjustable vocals for changing the volume of the original singer. This will be very useful at Christmas parties, I presume. And well, Cupertino also introduced advanced data protection, which expands end-to-end -end encryption to additional iCloud data categories. It can be used to encrypt iCloud backups, message backups, iCloud Drive content, notes, photos, reminders, Safari, voice memos, Siri shortcuts, and uh, wallet passes. Basically, with this update, all iCloud data is protected with the exception of mail, contacts, and calendar, but you have to enable it. Now with iOS 16.2, the always on display got better on iPhones. Now there are two toggle options for disabling wallpaper and notifications when the always on display is active. This feature gives the interface a much simpler and cleaner look by only showing the time and any enabled widgets and also saving battery. These are just a few of the many things. <laughs> WatchOS 9 got an update. We also got an update for iPadOS, so there's a lot. Now let's move on to something that's called nothing because it seems like Carl Pei wants to bring his phone to the United States. After skipping the North American market on its launch, the Nothing Phone 1 could uh, soon be set for a US launch with a limited testing program. Right after the Nothing OS 1.5 open beta started rolling out, Pei took to Twitter to confirm that this will also extend to the US with a testing program for the Phone 1 starting in the region. And let's not forget that just a few days ago, he confirmed that the company plans to bring the device to more regions, including the US. However, on that occasion, he said that nothing was in talks to bring a new smartphone, so that's why everyone thought that it would be a successor to the Phone 1. Also, earlier this year, the company said that the phone wouldn't be coming to North America, but now that they've sold, what, 500,000 phones, they are pretty much ready or in a better position uh, to negotiate with big American cellular carriers because you know that's the name of the game in the United States. Anyways, people that live in the US, would you like the Nothing Phone 1 to be sold in the US or a newer phone? Let us know in the comments. Now let's get back to Apple since we have a new report about a new MacBook Air that could arrive next year. According to a new information from Ross Young, Cupertino is developing a 15.5 inch MacBook Air that could launch in the spring of next year. And we've sort of talked about it. Ross also mentioned that the panel design for this model will start production during the first quarter of 2023. This MacBook Air would be sized between the 14th and 15 inch MacBook Pros and would be the largest Air model to date. Now, as for the design, rumors are claiming that we should expect the same general design of the 13 inch model that was launched earlier this year with flat edges, a large force touch trackpad, a better keyboard with function keys, the MagSafe charging port, the upgraded speakers, and a 1080p camera. Now, as for the chip, the report mentions that it will most likely get the M2 treatment. Also, despite it uh, having a larger display, it is not expected to feature the same mini LED display promo motion technology that we got with the MacBook Pros. Pretty much, this is simply a larger MacBook Air. Uh, we'll just see about that price. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about Oppo and the announcement of their new foldables. And hey, I have the Find N2 here already, so throw your questions in the comments for a full review coming sometime 
later. Anyways, earlier today, the company announced the Find Then 2 and the Find Then 2 Flip, but let's start with the first one. Now, this is a thinner and lighter device, even if it doesn't really seem that way. It has a new hinge mechanism that shrinks the crease by 67%, making it less visible. It has a 7.1 inch inner display that is uh, now much brighter, capable of peaking at 1550 nits, while the outer display is slightly larger at 5.54 inches diagonal thanks to the smaller bezels. It is also important to mention that both screens are now 120 hertz refresh rate. Internally, the Find N2 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 that you can pair with up to 16 gigs of RAM and up to half a terabyte of storage and the 4520 milliamp hour battery. Now, the weakest point of the Find N is now also addressed as the cameras are now co-developed with Hasselblad and uh, well, they look pretty impressive, at least in numbers. 50 megapixel primary lens, 48 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 32 megapixel 2X telephoto sensor. Now let's move on to Oppo's first clamshell to find then to flip. It features the powerful Dimensity 9000 Plus, and you can get it with up to 16 gigs of memory and 512 gigs of storage. Its internal AMOLED panel measures 6.8 inches diagonal when unfolded and has a 120 hertz refresh rate. It also uses that next generation hinge mechanism for an almost invisible crease, at least in photos. I mean, it looks pretty impressive. Now the coolest factor is this foldable's outer display, which stands out by being of 3.62 inches diagonal along with customization options. It also has a 4300 milliamp hour battery, which is remarkable considering it's pretty much the largest on a flip phone so far. The camera setup is made of a 50 megapixel main sensor and an 8 megapixel ultra wide unit. And on the internal display, we have a 32 megapixel selfie shooter. But hey, you can still use the main camera for selfies thanks to that roomy outer display. Both devices will go on sale in China soon, but sadly, only one of these is set for a global release, at least for now. We'll have to wait on official pricing outside of China, but Making a direct currency conversion, we can expect the Find N2 Flip to start at $850 and its bigger sibling at $1150. I know, the prices are already crazy, but anyways, in today's question, let us know, what do you think of Oppo's latest foldables? Because honestly, in my case, my first impressions of the Find N2 are already pretty great, but uh, more will come in our full review. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me play with the foldables that are pretty cool. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.